Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this evening. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on a Thursday night. Amen. amen. How many can you get a blessing? Amen. amen. Continue to pray for those that are in Poland, those that are deployed, those that are in Germany, those that are just gone. Amen. God, God bless them and God be with them. Amen. amen. So continue to hold them in prayer. We do miss them and we are looking forward to their return. Amen. amen. Hopefully soon. Amen. Hopefully Amen. soon. So continue to pray for them. And then also, let's not forget Saturday outreach, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock Saturday outreach. Amen. Amen. So a little bit of a change of a schedule there. Saturday, 12 o'clock outreach. And then, of course, there'll be some practice afterwards after that. And then Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, Pastor Olson will be here, be the will of the Lord, preaching to us. Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm going to have a good time. Amen. Amen. And be the will of the Lord, he'll be back Sunday night preaching for us. Amen? Amen. Preaching to us, preaching for the Lord. And then so after that, after that uh, service on Sunday night, we'll have fellowship and everybody's invited to come have a part of that. And we'll just have a good time. Amen? Amen. And looking forward to what God is going to do in these services this weekend. And I believe that we come with our minds open, our hearts open, ready to receive that God can meet needs in our hearts and our lives. Amen? Amen. Because God knows exactly what we have need of. Amen? Amen. So we'll be praying for him. It'll be Pastor, Pastor Olson and his daughter, Regina. And so we're looking forward to seeing them. Amen? Amen. Amen. So 12 o'clock Saturday, outreach. And let's just have a good time serving God. Amen? Amen. And then also we've been glad to have Brother Gus with us during the last couple, week and a half or whatever. And he'll be leaving back for uh, Fort Hood, Fort Hood up tomorrow morning. So pray for his journeys and pray for his travels. I told him that he could just stay. But I don't think Pastor Cyrus would like that too much. Amen. But you're always welcome here, brother. It's been a, been a pleasure having you. He's been out soul winning with us and various things. We do appreciate that. It's always good to see other members of the family of God. Amen. Amen. And it doesn't matter where we go. We can know that we can find someone that loves God. We're just family. Amen. Amen. And I've met Gus before at the conference selling hot dogs and nachos and chips and whatever. But so praise God. How many love Jesus? Amen. Amen. This time we're going to receive our Thursday evening tithe and offering. All Christians pay tithe. Amen. Amen. And all Christians give an offering as unto the Lord. My helper from the campground, Brother Morgan, Reverend Morgan, just signed in. Hello, Brother Morgan. God bless you. Amen. Amen. My sidekick at the camp. Amen. So God bless him. If you wish to give online, go to www, three W's, myntcc.org slash Junction City KS or on cash app, dollar sign NTCC Junction City, all right? Or just the old fashioned way, put it in an offering bag and God will bless you as you give unto him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's receive a good offering as unto the Lord. Brother Frankie, sir, please pray. Ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight in your presence to worship you and to give them to you, Lord. We ask that you bless each person in your service tonight, every gift and every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for your giving. God bless you for it, and he will. Amen? Amen. God will bless your faithfulness. Yeah. It may not be exactly when you want it to happen, but God will bless you. Amen? Amen. Right. In God's time, and that's the kind of timing that we want. Amen? Amen. But sometimes we get kind of impatient. Yeah. Sure. Or my wife's only honest one here, right? Sometimes we get impatient, don't we? Yeah. We want it now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, God knows exactly what we have need of. Amen? Amen. And God said he'd supply all of our need. Yes. Yeah. Not all of our greed, all of our need. Amen? Amen? I'd like to read to you this evening from the book of Leviticus, chapter 6. Pray for Pastor Olson as he travels in Regina. Amen? Amen. Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 12. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, 
It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Now I'd like to preach tonight for a little while on the title of a message, Maintain the Flame. Maintain the Flame. Reverend Palmer, sir, please pray. Amen. In our Bible study tonight, we find the law of the burnt offering. It's the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning. Verse 13, it said, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. It was the responsibility of the priest to make sure that the fire did not burn out. This meant that they would keep watch to assure that the fire was maintained. I want to remind you, and I want you to know this evening, that it is our responsibility to assure that we maintain the fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Well, wait a minute, Pastor, I'm not a priest. It's not my responsibility. It's your responsibility, Pastor. It's the brother's job to maintain the fire. It's the husband's job to maintain the fire. But listen to what the Bible says. Do we still believe the Bible around here? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What does this scripture mean? It means that through Christ, hallelujah, aren't you glad what we have through Christ? That every believer has been made a priest before God, and that means now, oh hallelujah, that we have direct access to God. Oh, praise God. It means that it is our responsibility. It is your responsibility to guard the flame, to be keepers of the flame, to maintain the flame of your own life. We cannot allow the fire of our lives to go out. How do we maintain the fire? We maintain the fire with the right components. There are three components to fire. You have the fuel, you have oxygen, and you have the ignition source. So that means that there are three components to maintaining our fire. How many want your fire to be keep burning, amen? Yeah, sometimes we allow our fires to go out. Is this still working? Sometimes we allow our fire to go out, don't we? Let's talk about it for a little while. First thing is fuel. What is the fuel in maintaining our fire? The fuel is prayer. Thanks be unto God that God made a way for us to pray. Amen? Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. I like this. They were there in the upper room. The 120 of them joined together with one focus. What was that focus? That focus was prayer. I want you to know we want our fire to be maintained. And if we want our fire to continually burn, we need to focus on our prayer life with God. We need to be sure. Be sure that the communication lines with God are open at all times. But let me tell you something. When we cease to pray, our fire goes out. Can I get a witness? When we cease to pray, our fire goes out. When we cease calling upon God, and you know, you can say whatever you want to say, but we still need to pray. When we cease to pray, our vision decreases. Hello, you no longer are concerned about the things that you used to be concerned about. 
Why? Because you have ceased to pray the correct way. You can pray, but you might be praying the wrong way. Amen? And then you cease to pray. Your vision goes away. Your fire goes away. You no longer see things the way that you used to see them. And then as we cease to pray, our desire for the things of God begin to diminish. And then our decisions begin to have worldly results. All because you took away the fuel. We need to pray. Say, Pastor, you said this a zillion times. I know that, but we still need to pray. Amen? Yes. How many can understand and realize that when we don't pray, the fire does go out? Yes. Things of God no longer concern you. Right. It's easier to have an apathetic attitude. Yes. It's easy to say, well, it just doesn't really matter. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm not interested in that anymore. I don't want to live. I, I just don't want to do that. Just let me sit over here in my corner and live for God and do my thing and everything will be all right. No, you need to pray. We need to be sure our fire is burning for Almighty God. Amen? And we need to fuel the flame with prayer. And when we pray, we need to have focused prayer. A lot of times we just pray, God bless this one, God bless that one. We throw it up in the air. No, let our prayers be focused. Can I get a witness? The church world today needs focused prayer in order to maintain the flame. In the book of Numbers, we read about how the Lord told Moses to tell Aaron how to light the seven lamps in the tabernacle. They were to burn perpetually as a symbol of the presence to the Lord. The, this meant that they needed daily attention. There had to be oil present for the lights to burn. And as you begin, <coughs> excuse me, as you begin to look at this, this is a wonderful picture of the Holy Spirit. The priest had to be sure all was right. The lamps could and should not go out. The oil had to be there. And we need to be sure that our flame is burning perpetually in our lives. That means that as they paid attention to the lamp in the tabernacle, we need to have a daily attention to our light, to our flame, to our candlestick, if you will. And just as the oil was present for the lamps, we need the oil of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can burn and that we can shine correctly. Oh God, I don't want anything to stop the oil flowing in my life. I don't want to be clogged up with the world. I don't want to be clogged up with attitude. I don't want to be clogged up with pride. I don't want to be clogged up with this garbage. Oh God, let my light flame for you. If the oil runs out, the lamps stop. If something clogs the oil from flowing, the light stops. Notice in Acts the parallel between the Spirit descending upon them and upon Jesus. In Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. And now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. What about the disciples' baptism? Acts chapter 2, verses 2 and 4 through 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want you know we need to pray, and we need the Spirit of God, and we need to pray in the Spirit through us. They were getting alone to pray. You know what? We need to get alone to pray. And we begin to read in the Bible how that Jesus was always getting alone to pray. The Bible says that he withdrew himself. You know what? I believe that we need to do the same thing. We need to withdraw ourselves. And we need to find a place to pray. Turn off your phone. Turn off your computer. Pray, talk to God. Amen. Amen. If we are to maintain our fire, we must be people given over to prayer. Now, I understand you're not going to listen to me tonight, but you know what? I pray that something will stick just a little bit. Amen. We need to pray and talk to God. Amen. That's the fuel. We need to pray. And I really think that all of us need to pray more. 
We have turned into a generation of players. Not players, but players. There's a difference, right? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, we're good at Uno. We're good at tossing the burrito. Right? We're good at uh, running the stacks, or whatever you call them, the pockets. Right? That's all well and good. There's nothing wrong with that. But he didn't say, my house shall be called a house of Uno. He is saying, my house shall be called a house of Toss the Burrito. Now, I'm not against these things, right? He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. We need to pray. Now, I'm not against, you know, tomorrow night we're going to do some things. Frankie found a, a new spot for us tomorrow night to go try out. Amen? All right, we're going to have a good time. So you're all invited to come if you want to do that. 1830, where's it at? Right here in town. How much does it cost? Five bucks. It's cheap, all right? So let's go have a good time, amen? So I think there's dodgeball, there's air hockey, there's ping pong, and there's... Uh, retro games, uh, batting cage. Batting cage, retro games, he said, whatever. Five bucks for two hours, that's cheap, amen? Right over here on 6th Street, if you want to come, come on and have a good time with us, amen? But with that being said, we all still need to pray. Amen. The proper balance in all things. And then we have the fuel, which is prayer. Now we add the oxygen. What is the oxygen for maintaining our flame? The oxygen is praise. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is worthy of our praise. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 4. I like this. He said, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I want you to know that our God's worthy to be praised. I'm going to tell you, we have a right to praise the Lord. I've got a right. I've got a right. What a right to praise God. How many want to praise God with me? I believe this Sunday, if God moves in a mighty way, we can praise God Sunday morning and Sunday night. <coughs> well, if I get loud in church, what will people think? Try it. They might join you. When you really come to the place and you realize and remember what God has done for us, it will move us to praise his mighty name. How can you think about how that God saved you, how that God delivered you, how that God has blessed us and not praise him? No, we're too busy being negative. We're too busy being negative. This ain't right. That's not right. Right now, you worry about that. Get away from me. Not literally, but you know what I'm saying. Take your negative attitude. Take it to the altar and pray. Amen. It's time to wake out of our spiritual slumber and remember our day of salvation. I like this Psalm 113. Psalm 113, verse 3. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. A lot of people may not understand us. They wonder why we get excited and why we want to praise the Lord. They just do not understand where God has brought us from. They don't know your past, and, and they don't know what God's done for you, and they don't know how that God has delivered you out of sin. Oh, but I know where I was. I know what I was, and I know that God reached down in the muck and mire of my life and pulled me up. He saved me. He delivered me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. I have a right to praise the Lord. David said in Psalm 40, <coughs> excuse me, Psalm 40, verse 2, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Sin was horrible, was it not? Out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. We've got a new song, amen? amen. We've got new things to say. No longer are we cursing God, we're praising God. Amen. I really believe that when men and women, when they see us praising God, and in reality, 
that it will cause them to turn and trust in God. People are tired of dead. They're tired of drowsy. They're tired of dreary. I believe that we need to get a little bit of fire in our lives. We need to turn on the flame. Hello? No, not some people. They're just like... You have zero emotion. Man, I hate to see what you were before you got saved. You must have really been a downer. Because if what you have now is simply the joy of the Lord, what, bro? Why can't we get excited? Well, people will think I'm weird. They already think that, so you might as well just praise God. You might as well give them something to talk about, amen? <laughs> Sunday morning, we can get excited on a Sunday morning service, can't we? If that's what God wants us to do. It's time that we start to praise him. Yeah. I was thinking about the other day. We need to get some choruses going on here. You got them in that songbook thing in there? Yes, so they can put them on the screen because they don't know the words. Yes, All right, we're going to get some choruses going on here. It's time to resurrect some of these choruses. Amen? Yes, what kind of choruses? Like, God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him in the church. I can feel him in the street. Oh! Aren't you glad that God's not dead? Well, if God's not dead, that means you don't have to be dead either. It is good to praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Amen? Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Really, 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 real, real. Christ so real to me. You know that one? You know that one? But we just have to learn it all together. Amen? All right, let me go back to my paper. All right, praise God, because you're not interested in praising him. All right, so let's go. Okay, uh, it's time that we start to praise him. Yeah. The fire will not burn without oxygen. And you cannot maintain your spiritual fire without praise. The Bible tells us that God inhabits or dwells in the praises of his people. I don't know about you, but I want God to dwell in my praises. I, I want to praise him. I want to praise him in the morning. I want to praise him in the noontime. I want to praise him in the nighttime. I want to praise him in the church house. I want to praise him everywhere else. It's time to praise the Lord. <coughs> in Luke chapter 19, we find, the we find the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. We already know how the people spread their branches and, the, and they laid their coats on the road and they began to praise God. We know how they began to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the Pharisees told Jesus to rebuke these people. And Jesus said, if these should hold their peace, uh, the stones would immediately cry out. I uh, want you know that we're smarter than a bunch of rocks. Uh, we are going to praise God. I'm not going to let a rock out praise me. I am going to praise my God. He is worthy of our praise. And, and, and don't get so loud. People get loud listening to rock and roll. They get loud listening to that stuff they call music, called rap music. It's just a matter of opinion. I don't really think that's music. It's just a bunch of dirty words that rhyme. I'm talking about abuse to people and authority and to women, all kinds of crazy things. It's not music. They can get loud for all that mess, but oh, we get loud for Jesus. We're labeled as a fanatic. Well, that's all right. I'd rather be a fanatic for Jesus than a fanatic for the devil. Our praise is a fragrance unto him as we praise him. You know what? You might have problems. We all have problems. We all have situations. But as we praise God, sometimes we come into church. We don't feel like praising God. And we're just kind of here because we're never supposed to be here. But what you need to do, you need to go ahead and stand and raise a little lightning rods in the air and begin to praise God. And next thing you know, the problems begin to fall away. You feel the spirit of God moving on the inside of you. Why? Because the fire is burning. And you say, wait a minute, it's because I'm going to praise my God. 
our praise. As we praise him, our fire will be maintained. Now you're too busy thinking about your problems. But we serve a problem solver tonight. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. We all got problems. Well, why don't we just go ahead and praise God anyhow? We have the fuel, which is prayer. We have the oxygen, which is praise. And now we have the ignition source. What is the ignition source in maintaining our flame? The ignition source is the word of Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus, for his word. Amen. Amen. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word is going to endure forever. Praise God. I like that when Jesus went out into the wilderness to fast and pray, the enemy tried to put out his fire, just like the enemy tries to put out your fire. And the devil said to Jesus, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made to bread. And Jesus said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Well, the devil didn't like that. The devil said, well... All this power will I give thee. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Man, the devil didn't like that either. The devil brought him to Jerusalem and set him upon a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. And Jesus answered him, Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. I want you know when we utilize the word of God, get thee behind me, Satan. Thus it is written. Thus saith the word of God. Oh, devil, the Bible says, the word of God says that if I resist you, you have to flee. I resist it. Take a hike. Get out of my face. Leave me alone. The Bible said that the devil had ended all the temptation and it departed him for a season. But here's the point that I want to make. Jesus, who is the son of God, he utilized the word of God as a weapon and a defense each time against the attack of the enemy. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was giving us an example of what you and I need to do. We have the faith. We have all these things going on. We need the ignition source, the word of God. Use the word of God. Amen? Amen. I like it that my wife has it and so does, a, you know your name, Connor. Connor has it. His phone goes, their phones go bong, 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 bong. Bong, 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 bong. That means it's time to read your Bible. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and I like that Connor says, yeah, today I was in 2 Corinthians or whatever he was saying. I was over here today. And I like that. That means he's reading the word of God. We need to read it. We need to hide it in our heart. Amen? Amen. Utilize it as a weapon. And if we want to maintain our flame, use the word of God. So the enemy of our soul cannot put out our flame. The devil can't do it unless we allow it to happen. There's power in the word of God. How many believe that tonight? <coughs> Hebrews, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick. That word quick there means alive. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, of the heart, not the hurt, the heart, amen? I'm glad tonight that God's word is powerful. This is our weapon to utilize when the enemy comes our way. Let's use it to slice and dice that old devil up. The word of God will light up your life if you read it and hide it in your heart. It's a big if, right? Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know what? What am I saying? What is God saying? The word of God will direct you in the ways that you need to go. When you don't know what to do, you know what? We make our plans and we have our goals. But do you stop and consider the word of God? God will never direct you. God will never guide you outside of his divine will. We do it because we pray, we pray and miss, and we may consume it upon our own lusts, our own desires. It's time that we maintain the flame with the mighty word of God. Think about this. Fire could be so intense. 
and everyone around it will burst into flames due to spontaneous combustion. So hot. You get so close, you'll burn up. If we maintain our fire and we keep it burning hot, everything you come in contact with is at risk to become part of it. How is your fire? Some of you don't have a fire. I'm not saying we have to do cartwheels everywhere we go, but you have no spunk. You don't have to do backflips coming into church. Now, if you see me doing backflips down the center aisle, rest assured, it's gone. <laughs> because I certainly can't do it my own ability. Right? Woo! If you see me do that, you know the presence of the Lord be here. Right? But some of you have zero spunk, zero drive, zero. You may have a great heart. Your heart may be be full of God, but you know what? Sometimes that stuff wants to come out. Right. Amen? Amen. I love God. I'm not. I'm not debating your love for God. I'm just debating the fact that you need to show some. Not. Yes. Amen? Amen. All right. You don't like this. Let me go. Where am I at? Fire could be so intense. Mm. Maintain your fire. Keep it burning hot. Those that we come in contact with are depending upon us to pass or to transpire the fire to them. You can't pass something you ain't got. Oh, no, I'm so, that doesn't sound very educated, does it? You can't pass something on to someone that you don't possess yourself. If you ain't got it, you can't pass it on. Some of you got your spiritual mask on so you don't pass the fire on to anybody. We used to wear the mask everywhere that we went, but you still got your mask on on the inside. Uh-oh. Mm. Your family, your children, your friends, your coworkers are depending upon you to maintain your fire and to pass it on to them. What are you passing on to people? Your negative attitude? Are you with me tonight? You were shouting a little while ago. Now, you, now you're quiet. Reverend Myers was supposed to preach tonight. Oh, well, save it for next time. Amen? He was mad at me because I asked him to preach and last night, and they were doing things. It was late, so he probably stayed up late, and probably took his lunchtime working on his message. And then he came home for dinner and said, I'll, I'll preach tonight. And he proceeded to take his dinner plate and throw it at me and said, what? No, he didn't do that. <laughs> you can't even picture Reverend Myers doing that. Could you? No, 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 you know, so you know I'm kidding, right? And if that was the truth, I wouldn't tell you. He might have, were you thinking that? I don't even think you thought that. Maybe I should have let you preach tonight. Were you preaching about the fire tonight? Okay. Well, praise the Lord. Come, come here and preach. Well, is he going to preach Sunday? Not unless pastor tells him to. Amen? Amen? So here's my question. What kind of flame are you passing on to your family? What kind of flame? <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. <coughs> Look at this. The grandmother and the mother and then on to her men. Look at that. It's on, on, and on. Amen? And that's the way it should be in our life. And to stir it up, we need God to stir us one more time. How many have ever been by a fire and you take a stick and you begin to stir it up so that fire will come alive again and to stir up that which God has given to us. Oh, God, stir us once again. In other words, because of your true faith and consecration, I remind you to stir up the gift of God that is in you. Be faithful, even in afflictions, according to the power of God that works in you. The gift is referred to as a fire, which, if not frequently stirred up and more fuel added, will go out. 
The Greek word for stir up means to kindle up the fire, to add fresh fuel to it. You want a fire out there in the cold, you got to maintain it. Amen? I'm going to tell you right now that men and women are looking to us, to all of us, to show them the reality of the fire of God. People are tired of phony. They're tired of hypocrisy. Not that we're perfect. Not that anyone here in this building is perfect. But you know what? We can maintain our fire and live for Jesus. Amen? I thank God for brothers and sisters who want to maintain their fire and for parents who have a desire to maintain the flame and to pass it on to their families and for Christians who maintain that which is right. Church, we need to maintain that which is right. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, we need revival in the church world. We need revival in the land, but it will never be so unless we maintain the flame. And the only way this is possible is if it is maintained every day in our Life. You have a responsibility. Come to the instruments, please. You have a responsibility. I can preach it. I can teach it. I can share it. But you have to maintain that fire. You have to praise God. You have to use the word of God. You have to pray. I can't do it for you. Because that, man, if that's the case, this place would be jam-packed full right now. People have to do their own part and assume their own responsibility. And I thank God for your faithfulness to the Lord. But let me tell you something. It would be a whole lot easier as you maintain that fire. As you bow your heads, please, and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord. Maintaining the fire. Maintaining 